Slim Jesus, the man who ruined his career with one interview. But for this, we got to go back in time. Slim, originally from Hampton, Ohio, growing up on Frank Block. He was listening to a lot of the popular drill artists from that time. Sosa, Dirt, all that. He was listening to that Chicago scene heavy. And so, eventually, over time, he wanted to do his own thing. And he made a song that would change his life in so many ways both good and bad 2015 come around he ended up dropping his song drill time that would blow up off rip but for mainly the wrong reasons when the song blew up he had the whole world question him people was confused on if he was really about everything he was rapping about they was feeling like he rapping about this but look like this so the game was split one half was feeling like he really lived everything he rapped about and the other half felt like he was a fraud which in reality is what most artists y'all listen to today. A lot of these rappers just be on the track, right? But when any controversial artist like this rapper started to pick sides, and one rapper who was on his side was somebody we all know, Lil Bibby, tweeted showing love to bro. But at the same time he was doing this, Chicago rapper Lil Mister dropped the diss track, claiming Slim Jesus was stealing sauce from Sosa. But the disses keep coming in. Another rapper, Ben Summers, came in, bro, claiming he had BB guns in his music video. But Slim didn't care. He was just happy that he was making money and making his Muse. Like when people started questioning him about how he felt because his music was going up, he said this. They got like 4,000 in one day. And that was crazy to me already. And now it said hundreds of thousands. And it wasn't even like overnight he blew up. He had been making music for years. But while this was going on, he met someone he looked up to for years. September 18th, 2015, Chief Keef was having a hologram concert for his new album at the time, Bang 3. But the event just went so horrible. While they were setting the show up, one of the producers ended up getting hurt, basically ruining the whole thing before it even started. And it ended up getting moved from the Fonda Theater to a parking lot nearby, but this ain't come without no controversy. The CEO of the hologram company that Chief Keef was using felt like they was trying to silence him. AEG and the Fonda Theater have continued the shameful cycle of blaming hip hop and the artistic expression of urban youth for their own corporate malfeasance. This follows the Chicago mayor, Rahm Emanuel's attempts to silence Chief Keith and scapegoat him for his city's complete inability to solve the warlike crisis on the South Side. But the venue responded back. We strongly dispute the allegations made by Chief Keith's associate of the events leading to the legal cancellation of this show. After a walkthrough at the venue with Chief Keith's production team, based on strong concerns for safety of our employees, the public, we exercised a contractual right and canceled the show. But you're probably wondering, what am I telling y'all this for? Because this was supposed to be a big moment in Slim Jesus' career. Because the thing is, he was supposed to perform that night. Sosa wanted him to be a part of this show, but them canceling meant he never got to perform. But one good thing did come from the situation. Slim Jesus meeting Chief Keith, even though his career was looking up. Days before this, he made the mistake that ruined his career before it even got started. So he was doing what more rappers do. and did some interviews and eventually got the one with DJ Vlad. And you know, Vlad is Vlad, so we get the question, bro. And eventually, the convo turned to Slim actually being about their life. And he had this to say, streetwise. I mean, for the most part, on the street stuff, like I got homies that are in there. And I know people who are and people around me. I mean, I'm not out here catching bodies and stuff. Obviously, I'm smart. And this moment turned the whole game against him. This had the entire internet split once again. Like on this interview with Vlad, the whole conversation conversation was on both sides. He seemed like a good kid. All he trying to do was find his way out one suburbs to some better suburbs. But on the other side, they were saying he real about being fake. I gotta give him props. He a genius. He played the system. Some people felt like he was a fraud while everybody else felt like he was trying to get a bag. And they was looking at him like he beat the system. And so over these next few months, every time he dropped a song, he would either get clown or get some love. But that changed. In October 2015, he was out in Atlanta and ended up getting pressed outside the club. Rapper Black Genius ran down on a pressing about his name. But this wouldn't be the last time Slim Jesus would have problems with a rapper named Black Cheese. Over time, though, more and more eyes was getting on him, bro. And at one point, Birdman was trying to sign, bro. November 2015 came around and headlines came out saying Birdman was trying to get out. King Yellow had hopped on an interview and told the world about the situation. Birdman wanted him on the phone. Thirsty for him. Slim Jesus hung up in the man's face. Birdman tried to fly us out to LA. But Slim Jesus didn't end up signing until about 2018. But that don't mean 2015 ain't in without some problems. Slim was making his money in the club, hit him up asking to perform. And bro got out there. And while he was on stage, a man who was supposed to be his DJ 
turns out to be another rapper who went by the name Black Genius. But this ain't the one that pressed him in the club a few months before. But he ended up cutting the music, ran on stage, snatched the mic out, slim hand, talking crazy. He said, support real hip hop. Then after this, bro pulled a flashlight out of his pocket and started shoving it in Slim Jesus' face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the nigga you did. Know what? <laughs> but with this situation, some people thought it was fake. And later on, it did come out as a publicity stunt. And really, at the 2015, the world forgot about bro. It was like the one question they debated about for months. He answered. He came out and basically told the world it was a fraud. And this hurt his reputation more than anything. It made any artist that wanted to work with him not work with him made people who could have been fans not want to become one anymore and over these next few years he was starting to be forgotten about and it wasn't really in the news again until Lil Tecca started blowing up so fast forward 2019 Lil Tecca blow up and, and his song Ransom that put him on the map he had a line that was like I got two twin gloves a few months later he got a jeans interview for the song and came out saying that he don't got no guns for nobody now I'm gone they see me blowing up now they say they want some I got two twin glocks turn you to a dancer I don't have no straps for nobody I don't got no straps no one ever thought twice about him saying this other than this one man slim Jesus after Tekka said this he came out giving his thoughts they came out saying like he felt like it wasn't fair how they was treated differently first of all I'm gonna make clear though I ain't hating on nobody else that's that ain't how I rock but I guess this little Tekka kid when the interview right and he said i ain't got no blocks i don't want no smoke my lyrics is my lyrics and i ain't got no more problem with that honestly because i know 95 percent of the game that's what I'm doing anyway bro my rapping and saying whatever the I'm gonna sell who gives a the music good you gonna listen to it so i ain't wish to get nothing but success here's my issue when i came out my first interview i said look i ain't out here trying to kill nobody i'm here to make my music Y'all motherfuckers to crucify my ass. So my issue lie with y'all dumb motherfuckers, bro, that swear y'all hate my ass so much, bro. But I don't think y'all really know why the fuck don't like me in the first place, bro. Now, they do got a point. They pretty much canceled Slim for coming out saying he ain't about that, but they gave Tech of the Pad. I think they situations was completely different though. On one side, we got Lil Tekka. And if you don't know, he get on songs and rap about money and women. And he might throw a little bar about something hard every once in a while, but overall his whole image ain't being some street hard nigga. His image is just fashion, making money. But on the other side, we got Slim Jesus, who whole image is just him being hard. He drop a music video, 90% of the video is him and his boys with guns in the camera. Or he drop a song, 90% of the lyrics is him talking about killing. Oh yeah, I'm smoke you, you done, like, you, you feel me? Like, if you Google Slim Jesus' name on Google, the first picture that pop up is him holding the gun. So the problem really come from the fact that Slim Jesus tried to base his career off being a street nigga, when in reality, he not. Like, Tekka ain't coming to the game trying to base his career off being a street nigga. So people just assumed that he was just rapping and that what he said in the song was just lyrics. Wow, when Slim Jesus say something on the song like that, you gonna expect it to be real because of how his image is. But at the end of the day, I do think Slim Jesus sold the bag. He should have never came out and told the world he wasn't living that life. That was the single worst decision he could have made in his career. Maybe his career would have lasted longer, maybe it wouldn't. That's a question we'll never know. But something we do know is where the artist from my last video's career was. This man went from being a childhood actor to the corniest man in the rap game to beefing with women in the WWE. And that crazy video is on screen right now.